Bowler is about to make a comeback. That's right. But today, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it a 10. And it's true. Laid off. The heartland lost some of its heart in the tough times. But today, Stuart Watson learned of a pilot project that promises a new beginning. Now people learn to live without it. For 45 years, fathers and daughters and sons in Toledo built the Citizen's Jeep. Now grandchildren will hear of 1986 as the year the old CJ died. They may hear of it as the year breadwinners gave up assembly work and pursued new skills on something they'd never used before, a computer. I've been laid off. My husband has been laid off. My father was laid off. I, I know what that feeling is, yes. Kelly Hodges understands the anger, and she's confident she can turn it around in three weeks. On Monday, she'll begin teaching the first class of former Jeep workers shifting gears to new careers. The UAW recruits, the Jefferson Center teaches, the state picks up the $135,000 tab. The local 12 was doing all the advertisement. No one, this was not a requirement for them. So the people that are signing up initially are those that probably feel real good about the challenge of, of such a course. So far, only 22 have signed up. But Hodges points out, sooner or later, the unemployment benefits and the subpay run out, and the center boasts a 73% placement rate. New jobs for a generation, which for better or worse, is not returning to the plant. Stuart Watson, Toledo 11 News. Well, this day, I always had on my gray coat. That's important. Chuck worked 20 years at Dana. At age 43, he's looking for a job. Linda once held a union job in Jeep. She wants to leave her assembly line skills. Each person unemployed is part of this group of 18 jobless people. Most of them laid off from Jeep. They are starting over, learning new skills for a new start. And with an opportunity to look at their strengths and weaknesses and how to take care of some of those weaknesses and capitalize on their strengths and go forth from there and hopefully, hopefully find some uh, positive employment opportunities. Well, I'm not sure, just knowing that I'm doing something about trying to get a job. You know, uh, that's important. Right now. Yeah. The United Auto Workers Union is a private industry council and Toledo Public Schools are sponsoring this career transitions program. It's a government funded effort aimed at helping the jobless. These circles right now are learning about computers. Well, I work in a factory. I work in a factory work. I'm interested in getting out of that line of work. It gives you a little bit of hope that maybe there's something out there for you. Program sponsors say they eventually can help 350 people in three-week sessions. There are no guarantees here, but there is a chance. I can it for 10 years. Bond was set this morning. However, a new career seminar might make their job search a little easier. For the next three weeks, 20 individuals will be taught interviewing techniques, resume preparation, and computer skills. What we're going to try and do is cultivate some interests that these individuals might have and channel their energies and their skills in new directions. Help them to see that, sure, they've been doing one thing for 10 years or 15 years, but maybe there is something out there that is suited to their skills and their abilities and something they could uh, possibly get a new career and, and be happy with. Most of the participants in the seminar have been laid off in the past, but many said this time off has been especially hard since the job market is flooded. It's kind of discouraging when uh, uh, you get uh, letters back from employers saying you have excellent credentials or qualifications, but yet thank you, but no thank you. It's discouraging. I'd like to get into skilled trades and into computer-aided machining if possible. Mm -hmm. So that way I know I've got a job that's going to be around for a while. Because the manual work isn't going to be here. It's all going to be computers and stuff like that. So I'm going to get a jump on it. The seminars were funded by a grant from the governor's office. 350 people are expected to participate in the three-week sessions, which will continue through February. DNC Moore, 24 News. Jeep spokeswoman Jan Skunda says no talks are scheduled for now. She says the ball's in the union's court. The union leadership must get the approval of the membership before it can reopen its contract. The union couldn't be reached for comments this afternoon. 
some of the people who once made Jeep CJs didn't go to the plant today. As Faith Murphy reports, they started a journey that could lead to new lives. These made off Jeep workers don't know when they'll go back to work, and they're not waiting around to find out. Instead, they're learning how to make new careers out of hobbies and other interests. The pilot program called Transitions is the brainchild of the Toledo Public Schools, UAW, and the Private Industry Council. Our primary goal is to help them to identify their strengths and to see where best those strengths can be used. The personal aspects of being laid off are also addressed. Workers learn to deal with the loss of income and the changes that come with it. They learn to look beyond the factory, which for some has been a way of life. After coming through the class, they begin to think of hobbies as possible employment for themselves. Of this group today, we had perhaps half that said that they would be willing to look at something other than production work. Hopefully, it will open up uh, different ways of contacting people uh, and getting into the door and uh, at least getting interviews. Well, I was kind of down on, but I think it'll be positive. It kind of lifts me up. And... These workers are the first to enroll here. Classes will continue at three-week intervals throughout the coming year. And if it proves successful, this helping hand may be here. The to strike in the financing war. And making the transition to a new life after layoff. Stay with us. Job hunting, it's a job in itself, a job you forget how to do while you're working. Amy Marsalis reports on some laid off Jeep workers learning how to play this new game. When the last CJ rolled off the line at Jeep, it marked the end of an era. It also meant a chapter closed for a thousand Jeep workers back in February. But it wasn't the end for some workers. Instead, they opened another door to find out more about themselves and their options in the workplace. Before they start pounding the pavement, some are finding out just what it is they want to do and how to achieve it through a class offered by the Toledo Public Schools. I'd like to be a social worker, but I didn't have the funds to go to college. Tab Hager, who'd worked at Jeep just eight months before the layoff, is exploring his interests and options in this class. So is Mike Jager. I like to stand in the manufacturing. Um, I like to work with the machine in. Other people. Employment counselor Chuck Weinblatt says it doesn't matter what your background has been, job hunting is job hunting. Some advice? It's important to keep plugging away. The next place they try may very well give them the job they've always wanted. In the class, Tabs also picked up some parenting skills along with newfound confidence. I'm going through all these classes, I feel a lot better about myself. And when he intensifies his job search, Tab will take much more with him than he brought here three weeks ago. Amy Marsalis, Toledo 11 News. Schools are important to this town. Toledo Public Schools and you. Toledo Schools, we touch so many lives right now. Come on. Departments. Arson is suspected in the fire at Petro's Market at Monroe and Auburn. Just last week, officials there say there were two failed arson attempts. No one was hurt in that 3 a.m. blaze. Can Toledo regroup in time to save its jobs? As factory doors slam shut at two Toledo operations in one week, 400 people stand on the outside. What are our leaders doing, and what does the future hold for Toledo's labor force? Two stories about Toledo's economy. First, Stuart Watson looks at keeping business in Toledo. Is it dawn or dusk for Toledo's economy? City leaders say they're working to save jobs. In the past, turf has been a problem. The Greater Toledo Marketing Group markets Toledo to Toledoans. The Convention Bureau markets Toledo to tourists. The Port Authority markets the port, and the Chamber of Commerce sells the city. For 100 days, the city has had its own economic development manager, John Lanier. I think at times, uh, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. And that can be a problem, but we've been working with all of the different agencies involved in the economic development to try to coordinate better, and I think we're making some progress. In that. Lanier believes saving and expanding existing plants is as important as attracting new ones. But in the last week, Toledo Press Steel and Stone Container Company have announced they're leaving, a move which chips away at Toledo's economic base. Okay, we'll remember that all this effort is just in its infancy. 
they just had the, the first meeting of bringing all those various uh, people together in the last few weeks. So the plan is, is now starting to come together to be developed. Like other waterfront cities, Norfolk, for instance, Toledo cashes in on its geography. Toledo's port ships the second largest volume of cargo on the Great Lakes. A downtown facelift impresses visitors. But the London-based economist summed it up best. Toledo wonders if it can arrest, with glittering waterside boutiquery, its seemingly permanent decline. City leaders think they can. Stuart Watson, Toledo 11 News. I'm Faith Murphy. No matter what new business city leaders attract to Toledo, certain jobs appear to be etched in our future. Like construction, for example. Toledo's tourist trade demands more buildings, more retail salespersons to sell to the tourists, and more nurses to take care of an aging population. What we don't expect to see more of? Manufacturing. I think virtually everyone in manufacturing understands the handwriting's on the wall. They can see it. It's not coming, it's already here. Manufacturing jobs are being lost by the thousands. The employment outlook comes from this year's labor market survey conducted by the Private Industry Council. Recent layoffs have triggered an interest in surveys both by employers and the workers themselves who are taking advantage of retraining programs instead of waiting for the manufacturing industry to improve. I'm interested in um, working with the public schools for working with children. What kinds of things are you interested in? Bus driving, truck driving. Retraining Jeep workers is one thing, but what's the future like for laid-off OCF workers who may be overqualified for the jobs in big demand? My guess is that many of them would probably move to maintain the same level of, of position that they have. Some will probably have to rechannel their efforts in different directions. Sullivan says in order to keep new jobs in the forecast, the city must first maintain the industry that's already here. Faith Murphy, Toledo 11 News. Voting is underway for control of the largest Teamsters Union. In much pomp and circumstance, Toledo unveils its new convention center. Our Tina Yen will examine the impact Seagate Center will have on Northwest Ohio. I want to welcome you to the first annual Labor Management Cooperation Presenters for this afternoon's session, which will be the people from AccuStar Incorporated, a division of Chrysler as of a few weeks back. Come on up and but I better change the sign too. <laughs> as far as introductions, directly to my right is Mr. Richard Suter, the plant manager, and Chuck Weinblatt, who is the education and training counselor, and John Kelly, who is the personnel director, and Mr. Bob Hammonds, UAW Local 1435 president. And to go to work in, uh, in 86, uh, getting training ideas together and putting on training programs, and uh, one of the first things we had to do was elect a, uh, select a training coordinator and we selected a gentleman by the name of Chuck Weinblatt who's going to come up here in just a second and give you some of the specifics on training. Uh, but before I turn the thing over to Chuck, I'd like to just say uh, and, uh, that I feel there's a real recipe that you could use uh, to get launched in your place a super training program. That recipe would, recipe would include, number one, cooperation cooperation on all the parties that are involved in putting the training programs together. Uh, the second part of that recipe would be organization, uh, to demand, absolutely demand, that meetings are scheduled when necessary and that uh, agendas are prepared so that when you go into these meetings you're prepared to talk about the real issues at hand and get some things done positively uh, in the area of training. Three, select quality vendors. We are very blessed in the Toledo area to have some super vendors available to us. We have the University of Toledo, we have Owens Technical School, we have the, the Penna County Group, we have uh, a lot of private vendors who are willing to help you with your training needs. Uh, select quality vendors and, and, and uh, you can't go wrong. 
the fourth uh, part of the recipe, I would say, is to publicize and utilize any and all means of financial assistance that's available to you. Of course, in the big three, we're blessed with the tuition assistance, and uh, we also have a, a nickel fund, we call it, which provides money for training. But any, any money that you can put aside for training, and the state of Ohio has some great programs that will help you with training uh, funds. The fifth and last part of the recipe is to select a quality training coordinator, somebody who is really going to do a super job of uh, coordinating and, and administering your training program. Uh, we feel we're very fortunate uh, at uh, Accustar Toledo Precision Machining Division in selecting Mr. Chuck Weinblatt uh, because of his background uh, in the area of training, but not only that, uh, because of the record that he's established in the short, short six months that he's been with us. So without further ado, what I'd like to do at this point is to turn this over uh, to Chuck Weinblatt, our training coordinator, uh, to give you the specifics of some of the training that we've done. And then Bob Hammonds is going to come up here and say a few words about our product quality improvement process. Thank you. The most valuable resource that any corporation has today is its living resource, its employees. No amount of state-of-the-art equipment will improve corporate profits if the existing workforce lacks the training to use it. Today, there are more than 30 automobile manufacturers worldwide. They will not all survive the 1990s. Survival depends upon a total commitment from management, labor, and the workforce itself to product quality, productivity, and swift reaction to market changes. As a result of the 1985 agreement between the UIW and Chrysler Motors, a firm resolve has been established to create the best trained and best equipped workforce possible. There is a clear understanding that training or equipment by itself is not enough, but together they can create a highly dynamic corporation able to meet the rapidly changing technological advances in the auto industry. I am living proof that the system is working. Since I'm in the unique position of working on a daily basis with both management and labor, I've had the opportunity to clearly understand both viewpoints. Quite frankly, I've been astounded by the amount of cooperation that I've witnessed from both sides of my local training committee. Believe me when I tell you that management has shown a keen interest in the personal development as well as skill upgrading of Toledo Precision Machining employees. And our union, Local 1435, has demonstrated a sincere effort to improve the productivity and quality of our planned operations. For those of you, like myself, who spent most of your lives in the Toledo area, you'll have to understand when I tell you this kind of attitude is remarkable. At this time, I'd like to show you a few slides demonstrating just a sample of some of the training programs that we have used local joint skill development and training funds to provide. About a year ago, uh, we sent a plant engineer to an existing ventilation system seminar at the University of Toledo. Uh, the purpose of this program was to cover uh, static pressure calculations, predicting system performance, adding to existing systems, dampers, computer-aided balancing, troubleshooting methods for salvaging, and temperature and altitude corrections. Uh, the total benefits include uh, improving and upgrading our industrial ventilation system with the latest methods and technologies, and at the same time, upgrading the skills of the plant engineer we sent. By the way, these are all bargaining unit employees that are involved in this type of training. Well, last October, we sent a total of 12 bargaining unit salaried engineers consisting of tool engineers, plant engineers, quality engineers, tool designers, to the 1986 International Machine Tool Exhibit in Chicago. On exhibit were machine tools from the United States, Japan, Germany, France, Italy, and elsewhere from the world. The benefits to our plan included a current awareness of state-of-the-art machinery and tools available to enhance competitive manufacturing and productivity. Once again, it not only benefited the plant, but provided skill upgrading to the bargaining unit employees involved. Early this year, we began Dale Carnegie courses. This is offered at local 1435 Union Hall on a regular basis. We're, we're offering it now. I anticipated when we began that approximately 100 hourly and salaried BU employees would participate in the first year. We currently have 135 participating. So uh, 
The, uh, obviously, the plant employees have been very enthusiastic about joining up and will be offering this again in the fall. Uh, the objectives of the Dale Carnegie course include developing and maintaining a positive outlook on life, expressing ideas and opinions clearly, meeting new responsibilities, understanding what motivates oneself and others, uh, forming more satisfying relationships with others, promoting cooperation, saving time and getting better results in meetings, gaining greater recognition and respect for personal abilities, and understanding the importance of setting and achieving goals in life. Uh, the outcome to the employees is the ability to develop more confidence, uh, to develop a more dependable memory, and to learn to live with less worry and tension. Um, the meetings are held on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at the local 1435 Union Hall. Um, the response, as I mentioned, has been just outstanding. Uh, numerous employees will stop me in the plant and ask when uh, Dale Carnegie will be offered again. And I've seen people positively come out of their shells from having participated in this program. Also, earlier this year, uh, we began computer awareness classes. We contracted with the University of Toledo. Uh, I anticipated that in the first year, approximately 400 bargaining unit employees would participate in computer awareness. And I was wrong. 720 registered. The response was just incredible. Uh, by the way, that 720 is virtually half the plant. The University of Toledo uh, at, at that time decided to offer us 28 classes in the plant, and the remainder of uh, those who were uh, unable to attend classes in the plant uh, due to overflow and overcrowding problems had the chance to take the classes here at Seagate Center on the third floor. Uh, we had a ceremony uh, for our computer lab. Now, I would like to mention at this time that uh, Toledo Precision Machining built a computer lab in-house. This is in the in-plant cafeteria where we had some available space. This was built entirely at plant expense. We never asked the National Skill Development and Training C C Center for one penny of this. And it was also built entirely by Toledo Precision Machining employees. Uh, when we kicked off the program, we had a ribbon cutting ceremony and our uh, keynote speaker at that time was Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, who gave a very inspiring address and presented our plant with this special certificate of congressional recognition for joint cooperation and offering training to plant employees. We're extremely proud of this joint effort and congressional recognition. This is the computer lab during a class. Once again, the response has been outstanding. Uh, this week earlier, I've been handing out uh, graduation certificates along with our local president, Bob Hammonds, and these people are positively eager to participate in advanced classes. Uh, the computer awareness program itself covers keyboarding skills, introduction to programming, uh, software packages, and terminology. The advanced classes, which will begin at the end of this month, will include advanced Lotus, word processing, programming, database, and robotics. And once again, because of the massive registration, uh, all of the employees who did not get a chance to get scheduled in plant had the chance to take the classes here at Seagate Center. In addition to the programs that you've seen, we've also used local skill development and training funds to provide training for bargaining unit employees in the areas of data collection and analysis, welding applied maintenance, applications of modern cutting tools, uh, seminar and progressive dyes, tracer lathe training, and recently we purchased some training equipment uh, for the purpose of videotaping training which occurs at the plant. Currently, I'm in the process of uh, obtaining bids to have training in the plant on site and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. And before the end of the year, I hope to have established credit classes in the plant in the areas of electronics, hydraulics, pneumatics, blueprint reading, welding, basic skills, GED, pre retirement, and financial planning. Now, some of these we'll, we'll use local joint skill development and training funds for, others 
employees will use their tuition assistance plan for. During the past few months, I've learned a great deal about the automobile manufacturing business, but I've learned even more about the heart and soul of this business, the people, the machine operators and assemblers, the inspectors and the welders, the carpenters, pipe fitters and electricians, the tool and die makers, the stock chasers and the janitors. I've learned that these hourly employees are genuine human beings with real feelings, desires, and needs. For the past 20 years, other than skilled trades, there's been virtually no training for these people. No skill training, no personal development, nothing. Now, for the first time in the history of Toledo Precision Machining, training is available for all employees, not just management, not just salaried, everyone. When I arrived at Toledo Machining, I was greeted with a fair amount of mistrust by the hourly employees. Perhaps they thought I was a management spy. They certainly were unprepared for my offer of assistance with education and training. However, with our first plant-wide training program, Computer Awareness, the mistrust began to disappear. Now, with hundreds of employees participating in training programs, I've noticed a definite change in employees' attitudes. Through dozens of individual counseling sessions, I've learned that most hourly employees are interested in education and training. I've learned that they are sincerely concerned about the future of our plant. The key to our success at Toledo Precision Machining has been joint labor management cooperation. When I schedule a committee meeting, I can count on all committee members to attend and leave other problems outside the door. When the meeting begins, nothing interferes with the business of skill development and training. The most gratifying part about my job is observing the outcome of these efforts. It truly is a case of everyone coming out a winner. Chrysler Motors benefits from having a well-trained workforce, able to meet the technological changes necessary to survive into the next century. The UAW benefits by having a stronger and more viable membership to increased education and training. And the employees themselves benefit from personal development and increased vocational marketability. And if you think about it, when workers receive the education and training that they deserve as an integral part of the corporate system, they become happier employees with a greater sense of dignity and self-respect. Happier employees are more likely to take their jobs seriously, thereby increasing overall productivity and quality. In conclusion, I'd like to say that I'm very proud to be a part of the UAW Chrysler Skill Development and Training Program. We've accomplished a lot in a brief amount of time, but the best part is what's yet to come. If we've done this much already, imagine what we can accomplish in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. You see what I mean when I say get a good training administrator. Dean Lauber, meteorologist Stan Stachek, and Neil Hartman Sports. to bring down health care costs and increase the quality of health care services. It's not a merger, but Toledo Hospital and St. Vincent Medical Center today announced they formed a joint venture. Basically, it means the two hospitals will work together to lower insurance costs by creating their own HMO or PPO, that's Health Maintenance Organization and Preferred Provider Organization. The presidents of both hospitals say ultimately this will help cut the cost of treating uninsured and indigent patients. In the city, the cost of energy care is about $25 million a year. And the unfortunate part of that, that $25 million is spread only on 60% of the inpatients because 40% are over 65 and Medicare doesn't pay any cost of indigence. We need to find uh, better ways of taking care of the indigent and whether we can do that. The, the joint venture itself uh, speaks to our mutual cooperation within certain areas. Uh, outside of that joint venture, however, uh, it is still necessary and we will still be uh, competing uh, in programs and in services. While the hospitals will continue to be two separate competing entities, they'll work together to have the joint venture staffed in the next few months with the new organization ready to start working before the end of the year. Labor and management got together in Perrysburg today, not to work out a new contract, but to share ideas which, as 13's Jim Harpin now reports, are aimed at helping area businesses take on the world. They were all there, labor and management leaders from the Toledo area's biggest automotive plants. 
Unlike other labor management meetings, the rules were not labor versus management or even one company against another. Rather, it's the Toledo automotive industry against the rest of the world. We don't think we have really a hostile labor force. We just think that the country doesn't understand the labor force that exists in northwestern Ohio. I think there is a, a trend towards more cooperation, and uh, I see that within my own facility, and I see that now talking to the other companies. And the record backs up those observations. In 1985, Toledo saw workers at 14 companies hit the picket line. Last year, that figure dipped to eight, and so far this year, there's only been one strike in the Toledo area. Labor management negotiators say Toledo is growing up. I think given the spirit of the things that, the way things are going and the, the fact that more people are starting to become educated in the fact that we've all got a stake in this, uh, 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 trying to keep American industry competitive in a world market, I think that's, that's the way to go. With this shaping up to be Toledo's best labor year ever and with efforts underway to keep it that way, the trick now is to get the word out that Toledo is not the tough labor town it's made out to be. I'm Jim Harpin, 13 News. This is 13 News with Jerry Anderson, Janine Lauber, meteorologist Stan Stachek, and Neil Hartman Sports. Dealerships and is looking for ways to improve production at its newly acquired Toledo plant. United Auto Workers spokesman Jack Sizemore says Chrysler officials told the union that they will need improved production at the Toledo plant because of a sharp increase in sales. Jeep sales jumped 20% in the first six months of this year. Negotiators for the United Auto Workers rejected a General Motors proposal linking job security and pay raises to plant productivity. The proposal would freeze outsourcing. That's the practice of buying parts manufactured by subcontractors. The plants that meet quality and construction goals would be rewarded with pay hikes and job security. But the UAW says workers should not suffer if someone in management makes a bad product decision. The union calls the GM proposal much ado about nothing. Today, all workers at the Chrysler plant have the opportunity to go back to school. The Education Fair, sponsored by Chrysler and the UAW, provides educational counseling to both management and hourly workers in a field that's been changing through the years. In the auto parts industry today, uh, the future is somewhat unclear. Uh, many employees are interested in pursuing um, a degree program, an associate degree in particular, uh, and they're interested in finding out what the areas of skill that employers will be looking for in the future are so that they can prepare themselves uh, uh, for the future. Workers will receive $1,500 a year for tuition at any accredited school. The Toledo-based Scheller Globe Corporation has decided to build a new auto parts plant in Indiana. The company says it's the, uh, the uh, site for the new auto mirror plant will be in... Educational fair. The free hot dogs are the university's way of drawing attention to an expanded schedule of credit and personal interest courses to be offered downtown this fall. The university is attempting to make sure Toledoans know that their facilities now include a portion of Toledo's new convention center. This is the 28th year for the scholarship. Gosser's widow says it's still a heartwarming honor. That's very, very uh, sentimental, good, good feeling because he was very, very good, very good, great man, really. One of the better, better labor leaders, I think, as far as that was concerned. But outside of just doing things in the labor organization, he was all... Students are smiling. They won $5,000 a piece to put towards college. The Richard T. Gosser Scholarship Awards go to sons and daughters of United Auto Workers members. Ryan Huss, Joseph Strout, Steve Banco, Allison Pruitt, Christina McNett, and Michelle Petrick are the winners this year. The scholarships, $5,000 apiece, have been given out. From the profit and nonprofit sector, quizzed politicians on everything from upcoming solid waste legislation to taxes to a call for tougher drug laws and drug sentencing.